Good afternoon, class. Welcome to week eight. This week, we're going to cover chapter 37, which is over documenting and reporting. So we're going to first talk about the health record. The health record is a manual or electronic account of a client's relationship with a healthcare facility. You record all info regarding their past and current problems. The nurse, being the primary caregiver, must record client information clearly, accurately, and frequently. The commonly used term for documentation is charting. So think about it. Charting, the information we as nurses put into the record, chart, facilitates the continuity of care. We put information regarding the client's appearance, behavior, and responses so that we can keep other caregivers informed. It, our charting facilitates the continuity of care. We input information regarding the client's appearance, behavior, and responses so that we can help other caregivers, so that we can keep other caregivers informed. And the client's, like I said, the client's health record is usually called the chart. But it can be called the chart. We do charting. It can be called the health record. But make sure that what we put in our charting, that the information is clear, accurate, and we chart frequently. Accurate and complete documentation in the client's health record is an essential communication tool. It is used to maintain effective communication among all caregivers. It provides written evidence of accountability. It meets legal, regulatory, and financial requirements. And as well as it provides data for research and educational purposes. This is all located on page 435, Purposes of the Healthcare Record. The health record as a communication tool. It helps caregivers to exchange information with one another. It also offers the client, the client documentation and verification of their own health status. And it includes information about the client's condition, treatments, responses to treatments, and plans and instructions for treatment of the client. So the goal for maintaining a healthcare record for the client is documenting the ongoing health status of the client. And a question being, how would you improve the care for a client? What intervention would be most effective? Review the client's health record. See what information is in there that can help you to provide an intervention that would be most effective for the client. The health record is a documented evidence that the healthcare agency and providers have acted responsibly and effectively. It meets legal requirements and protection. It is a legal record. Regulatory requirements. It proves the agency has met standards of care and financial accountability. It enables third-party payers to reimburse facilities. If you look on page 436 under financial accountability, you must record all treatments given, examinations administered, and special equipment used, such as an air mattress. You must enter every aspect of your care to tell the third party payer what has been done. Failure to do so may result in a loss of payment to the employing agency 
ultimately leading to higher cost for clients and consumers. Health care planners examine health records of individuals and groups to determine patterns of illness, trends, or effective treatment strategies. Health records, particularly those kept in computer databases, provide excellent research opportunities in healthcare. And healthcare records are also excellent educational tools. So question, I know you guys can't answer me back, but I can believe you are. If a nursing action is not documented in the medical record, in the eye of the law, the nurse is not responsible for the action. True or false? That is false. If health records are audited, if it was not documented, it was not done in the eyes of the law. This does not exempt the nurse who makes an error. Contents of the healthcare record. What is it? It is assessment documents, plans for care and treatment, the progress records, plans for continuity of care. A client's health care information should be confidential. A client's health care information should be confidential. And also, if it is computerized, remember, never share your access code to the electronic documentation system. I'll go back, lab records. We will find lab records in a patient's um, chart as well as consultations. The healthcare per, um, physician will do, they do the consultations. They record their findings and opinions. Um, we may get consults that are requested by the primary caregivers to other um, disciplines. So you can always read the consultations that a client has had and it will be in their charts, usually under consultation. Healthcare records, plans for care and treatment. Plans for care and treatment ensure that all caregivers provide the same care and treatments for the client. The problem list is your healthcare physician. They describe the goals for treatment. Physician orders is also your healthcare physician. They have those are instructions to nurses or techs to implement diagnostic tests, treatments, or meds. Nursing care plan that is the RN or LPN in some facilities. It lists the expected outcomes of nursing care and actions to achieve those outcomes. Teaching plan is the nursing staff. It identifies the client's teaching needs and teaching strategies. All caregivers are the clinical care path. That is a plan that specifies expected outcomes and treatments at specified times for all members of the healthcare team. Consents for treatment, admitting personnel, the healthcare physician, nursing staff, Consents for treatment explains expected and possible adverse outcomes for treatment and it contains the client's signature. Formats for written documentation. Formats of written documentation are based on assessment, nursing diagnosis, planning and goal setting, implementation, interventions, and evaluation. You have your flow sheets. Those are like manual um, and MIS records have flow sheets. Vital signs should be documented in a manual health record. Medication administration record. It depends on if your um, facility is, they do everything um, by computer or, you know, do they still have manual health records? And then your progress note. The purpose of a progress note is to document a response to treatment. The purpose of a progress note is to document a response to treatment.
Continuity of care forms. Plans for continuity of care forms are used to ensure the client's care is consistent and effective. You have your teaching record, your transfer form or screen, or your discharge transfer summary. These all contain information that enables other caregivers to ensure continuity of care. They contain information that enables other caregivers to ensure continuity of care. The healthcare record is either a manual paper document, an electronic document, or it can be a combination of both. Electronic documents are located in a medical information system, MIS, which is housed in a computer network. Another documentation system is referred to as electronic medical records or EMRs. The MIS may only contain specific medical information. So um, a lot of times they will use, a lot of places use the electronic medical records. But some are still old school and they have the manual records. So you need to know how to complete a manual record just in case everything goes down. You, if the computer system goes down, you need to know how to complete a manual record. Manual records can be kept at the client's bedside for convenience. It documents all important data. Remember, the nurse is responsible legally for leg legibility, thoroughness, and timeliness of documentation. So if it's manual records, you're responsible legally for the legibility thoroughness and timeliness of documentation. Computer records can simultaneously be transmitted to a physician's office or to a distant location for interpretation. All information included in the MIS or EMR is similar to that found in the manual record and it requires use of the computer system. So it is the employee's responsibility to know how to use the computer system. It is an employee's responsibility to speak up if they have issues or do not understand how to use the computer system. Narrative or chronological. Narrative or chronological, they are very thorough and detailed, time consuming. Progress notes, nurses notes, narrative charting. It is useful in documenting complex descriptions. Then you have problem oriented or focused charting. That's and where you um, focus on a specific problem rather than general assessment data. The benefit is greater time efficiency but it may not include all pertinent data. So focused areas, they can be called SOAP, SOAPier, ad, API, PI, DAP, DARP, DARE. See page 431 for all the definitions of those. And then discipline area, area documentation. It's separate notes for the healthcare providers, nurses, RT, dietary, PTOT. The data appears separated and fragmented. And then charting by exception or CBE. You make notations about abnormal findings. A type of narrative charting that uses a flow sheet. It may be a disadvantage when a legal defense claim such as negligence is necessary, but you must be sure all charting is thorough and complete. The thing of it is charting by exception. That's where you just check boxes. And if something is abnormal, then you will chart, then you would just make specific note to that abnormal finding. 
And like I say, it may be a disadvantage when a legal defense claim such as negligence is necessary. So we also have system flow sheets. And then we have case management. Case management is popular in situations in which emphasis is on quality care that is delivered in the most cost-effective manner. They can be, um, you may have a critical pathway, it might be called a collaborative pathway, and they might even call it care mapping, and it's often used in a typical stable patient. A lot of home care agencies use those. And then you can have a graphic flow sheet, which it's in graph form, which allows easy visualiz visualization of trends or clusters. Both licensed and unlicensed personnel can record large amounts of data on a graphic flow sheet. You will see those a lot of times in like a surgery type that they will use a graphic flow sheet. And then you have a medication administration record or your MAR that lists all meds the healthcare provider has ordered and it allows a space to mark when the meds were given and also to document injection sites if necessary. So charting by exception uses SOPIR or a system flow sheet format for certain progress notes. True or false? That is true. Charting by exception uses a SOPIR or a system flow sheet format for the progress notes where abnormal signs or symptoms, the exception to the normal status, are specifically identified, assessed, and interventions are documented. Narrative charting, advantages and disadvantages of these forms. Narrative charting is very thorough and detailed. It is time consuming. Documentation by discipline. It helps providers in each subspecialty find their own forms quickly and follow the progress of their therapies without having to read notes from other disciplines but it can be difficult to monitor data as a holistic view of the client. Charting by exception is efficient, especially for the client who is physically stable with an uncomplicated care plan. May be a disadvantage, like I said earlier, when a de legal defense claim such as negligence is necessary. Case management or critical pathways. The client is the focus of the case study. Achieve specific outcomes identified in multidisciplinary team approach. But case management or critical pathways may not be suitable for a client with special or complex individual needs. And like I said, talked about on the medication administration record, or the MAR, it has, it lists all the medications a physician has ordered as well as other information. And the MAR can be used by non-licensed personnel as well as licensed nurses. What information is found on a flow sheet? Usually it's your vital signs, your I's and O's, your ADLs their dietary or eating patterns. There'll be a place for neuro checks. There's another spot to um, document for restraints, frequent blood sugar monitoring, post-op records, wound care, and monitoring. And there's even a place for lung sounds. Guidelines for documentation. Remember, document what you see Describe exactly what you observe. Describe objectively. Do not give opinions or interpretations. Do not give your opinions or interpretations. Be specific. Avoid ambiguous statements and generalizations. Avoid judgmental words such as fair, well, Poor, good, because WNL means within normal limits. But what is normal limits? 
because normal limits can be different for each and every client. Use direct quotes. Directly quote your client. Enclose in quotation marks. Be prompt. Document immediately after giving all care, meds, treatments. Never document before. If you forgot to document a pertinent fact, you can do a late entry. Be clear and consistent. Use correct spelling, punctuation, and sentence structure. Make sure the record is continuous and legible. Use black ink and use only standard abbreviations. And there are standard abbreviations starting on page 443. So certain abbreviations you may <clears throat> want to keep in mind is on page 444, AC, BID, page 445 is U. NGT or UNG for ointment. And table 37 5. I want you to pay particular attention to the official do not use list. Do not use a U because it can be mistaken for a zero, the number four, or CC. You want to write out unit. MS can mean either morphine sulfate or magnesium sulfate. Write it out. Write morphine sulfate. And then table 37-6. Additional abbreviations, acronyms, and symbols. The at sign can be mistaken for the number two. The CC can be mistaken for units when poorly written. You want to write MLs or milliliters. Apothecary units, they usually don't use anymore because it's very unfamiliar to many practitioners. So pay a close attention to especially the abbreviations AC is before meals, BID is twice a day, and UNGT or UNG is for ointment. And also for your documentation, record all relevant information, respect confidentiality, and record documentation errors. So when you're charting, especially if um, a manual chart, do not leave vacant lines in the record. If you continue on the back of a sheet or a new page, Again, you want to write the date, time, and continued before continuing your entry. If a vacant line is left between entries, draw a line through it to indicate that the documentation is chronological. Also, always sign the chart with your first initial or full first name and full last name and your classification. It is required for every charting entry. So sign your charting with first initial or full first name and full last name and your classification. It is required for every charting entry. And then I'm just going to give you an example of documenting what you see. You have a client that you were care, um, taking care of, and you are putting in your documentation about the, you're describing the client's activity. And what you think is, and not, you're describing their activity, not what you think it means, but their activity. 
So the example in the book is client crying and rocking back and forth in chair is an objective and descriptive statement. However, if you come, you could write client out of touch with reality, client lonely, client in pain. Are those objective statements or subjective? So you want to make sure you document clear and accurately client rocking in chair. In case of an error in documentation, you want to cross out the incorrect statement with a single line and close it in parentheses and write error and initials next to it. Some agencies recommend using recorded in error or RIE instead. Other agencies, they may use mistaken entry. After filling in the term that your agency uses, record the correct statement. So um, with an EMR, they have a mechanism for late entries. You know, if you hit the submit button and then realize there it, you made an error in your documentation, there is a way to go in and correct that. But always make sure don't scribble it out. Just cross it out with one single line. This is on manual documentation. You cannot use erasable ink. You cannot use correction fluid on manual written health records because those measures can be considered an attempt to hide poor nursing care or an error made in the client care. You just want to put one single line through it and close it in parentheses and write error and your initials next to it. Reporting off information. When you report off, you summarize the activities and the conditions of your assigned clients because they, you do this if you're leaving for a break or at the end of the shift. This report off can be brief or quite detailed. It can be brief if you're going, if you're leaving the unit for a break or lunch, but at the end of the shift, you want it more, the report off to be more detailed. Change of shift reporting is a means of exchanging information between the outgoing and incoming staff of each shift. And then also in walking rounds, caregivers move from client to client discussing pertinent information. Walking rounds encourage client participation and enables the oncoming staff to view equipment, dressings, and other treatments with the previous nurse. The outgoing nurse is able to introduce the incoming nurse to the client. And this technique, a lot of times, personalizes that client's care and helps to establish rapport. You know, if your report is verbal, make sure it's given in a location where visitors cannot overhear you. But always remember to report off to someone. And that is chapter 37. So most importantly, always make sure that your documentation is clear, accurate, it is concise, it, you do not include judgments in there, um, and chart regularly because charting should be done. It can be done hourly. It can be done every two hours or per event, but I encourage you to always chart when you have completed something and chart regularly. Do not wait to the end of the shift to do all your charting because guess what? If you wrote all your pertinent information on your little sheet, which nurses call it their brain, and you lose that, how are you going to recall what you have done throughout the shift? especially when you are providing care for more than one patient. It's very hard to recall everything you have done throughout the shift. 
So chart when you're done doing, when you're done providing cares for the patient, and then move on to your next patient. Have a great week.